ID8 BIM link is all about taking the data that you build up in your Revit model and being able to export that to Excel and make manipulations and changes in Excel and import that data back in or import the data into Revit again. So I've got a very short video here that kind of explains this and then I'll go um, live. So this is actually nice because it's showing ID8 BIM link 2015. So what we, we ship with BIM link about two or three hundred different samples and those samples are very, think of those as like schedule definitions in a way or schedule templates. It's just as the same thing as you'd have scheduled templates in your, your project. Um, so it gives you a starting point, but at that, um, once you have that starting point, you can add parameters or subtract parameters. I mean, you can modify any of these as you see fit. Or you can start out by just selecting the category, like in this case, lighting fixtures, where I want to create what we're calling a link definition. So you see here there's the sample link or you can build the information directly from the schedule. Now down below you'll see that I have a schedule already um, shown there that has different things like type manufacturer, manufacturer, model, lamp quality, you know those are the parameters that were in this particular schedule. So it, you know you see that it's very similar to a, a schedule in Revit where you can sort on system parameters, project parameters, family parameters. So if you've got shared parameters, that can be part of the uh, export that you do with ID8 BIM link. So all that data is made available to you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export that, 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 that information or that link definition to Excel. We're going to open up the file in Excel and you'll notice that here we've got some, you know, the, the columns, like in this case voltage, alternate manufacturer, mounting size, they match the parameters that we had over on Revit. Now I've got one already filled in, so the, let's say someone went through and filled out this information in Excel, and now we're going to import that information into Excel. So you see there was the voltage and the alternate manufacturer, the light alir, and we're now going to import that, that data and you'll see it automatically fill out in the schedule. Now you may say to yourself, well, why wasn't the lamp catalog and the diffusing media and the trim color and the mounting, why weren't those a uh, part of your pre-filled um, information? Well, it's because we separate um, ba uh, basically parameters in Revit based on type and those that are based on instance. Now we can send them to the same spreadsheet, but we're giving them basically two different tabs. So we'd have a, a workbook that would be a, a tab that would be the uh, types and then a tab that would also be the um, instances. So we're very sort of logical about categorizing these things and I think it makes a lot of sense to be able to separate these based on type and instance. Now I've got that pre-baked, that information, I'm importing the information into, from Excel and now the rest of the lighting fixture schedule is automatic. Okay, now let's go live. So here, the same file that I was in before, right? And in fact, let's get back. It doesn't really matter like what view I'm in, but I always like to be in a floor plan view here. Um, and so now we're going to show ID8 BIM link. And the little video I said you saw there was uh, 2015, but here is ID8 BIM link 2017. And this one I'm going to show how you can, you know, there's already some, pre some links that are defined. Those are saved in the Revit project. So when you save, you know, do a sync with central, it's going to save that information. You can also have this as be part of your template. But I'm going to save from schedule. And I'm going to come down here and I've already got in this project, you know, a room schedule. So it's listing all of the schedules that are in the project. So I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to create an instance link of the room schedule, right? And it's going to give me the properties that are in that schedule. So right now, we've got things like the room number, the room name, the area of the room, the, the room type, and then we've got some base finishes here. And let's say for this, in, this actual export, I don't care about the finishes at all, so I'm going to remove those. I don't want those to be part of my export. But maybe I want the department, so I'm going to double click on department to add it. And then not only do I have, as you see here as I scroll down, <clears throat> all the list of available properties for rooms, but I can choose uh, and pull information from the coordinate data, from level information, from phase information, from the actual RVT link ex uh, as an example. So if I come over here to level, 
I might want to look at the level name as an example. And you'll see that that is, in this preview down below, it's kind of showing me what's going to get exported to Excel. Now, I can also use my filter and sorting. Right now, I'm sorting by the room number, smallest to largest. But I can go the other way around, largest to smallest, and you see it reclassifies down below here. But in this case, I want to keep that so that the, the smallest room number is on top there. All right, well, let's go back to our properties. So this is the information I want to send out to Excel. I'm going to say, you know, done, and now export. So it asked me for a room name, or, a, or I should say room name. It asked me for a, an Excel name. I'm going to give it room schedule. Um, so it just is the same name that you have this, the schedule as an example. And now I'm going to open up the file. So here I'm now opening and editing information in Excel. Now the first thing I'm going to do is you notice that the room number starts off 101, 102, and then 103, then it kind of skips and there's some, there's some gaps in my sequence here. Well using Excel, there's some really nice things you can do. I can highlight on room 101, 102, and I can use this little green bar here and I can say, you know what, fill down the rest of the rooms so I go all the way down and put those in sequence. So now it just renumbered everything automatically from starting at room number 100 all the way to room 147. You know, that's something you just can't do in a Revit schedule, be able to, to do those things very easily. Also, look at, I've got occupancy as a department. I'm going to do a control C and I can paste those items. So again, that's something you just can't do in a schedule. Now, when there's a situation like a room type or maybe a, um, let's say a view template uh, that has a set list of items, we automatically build a, uh, a list for you. So in this case, let's come down here to the viewing area room, and I now have this list built in of, oh, I, is that classified as a, you know, a classroom, a hallway, an office, utility? Maybe it's utility, right? And now I can pick from that list, and I know that I'm spelling it correctly, and I've got the right information. Once I uh, have multiple items here, I can say, well, you know what, I want to copy those down, and again, now copy that information. Now, um, uh, you can use all kinds of really cool formulas in Excel. That's another great advantage. So if I come over here to the catering kitchen and all the rooms happen to be uppercase um, um, text. Maybe I wanted to change that to lowercase. So I'm going to come over to an area here, doesn't matter where, to the right, and I'm going to do a formula. And I'm going to say the formula is lower, and I'm going to say that is column C2. So what it does is it takes that that's a little Excel formula that takes the catering kitchen and makes it now lowercase. Well, because I've got that little um, uh, <clears throat> green uh, uh, grab bar, I can come down and say, you know what, I want to paste that formula down to all of the rooms. And now all of the rooms are lowercase. Now, if I have that data, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. But then when I paste it back, I don't want to paste the formula because then I get kind of a circular reference. I'm going to paste the value. So now when I paste the values, it's now back to, you know, it, then use this formula over here to the right to change this to a lowercase catering kitchen and so forth. Now I may also want to come down here and add some information. So if I uh, come over, let's say, to this item here and I'm going to enter that, oops, didn't want to paste that. Um, and we're going to say that this is going to be maybe room 150 and we're going to say room 200. And we're going to say this is going to be called the Microsoft Resources Meeting Area. And then we're also going to say that we want to have a prep kitchen maybe. So I can just add as much information as I want. Uh, maybe these two things are going to be offices and they're going to be uh, occupancy as a department. So I can come over here and again do Control V. Now all I need to do with IDA BIMLink is tell it there's not a, a um, Revit um, uh, number here as far as an ID number. I just say new. So I'm telling IDA BIMLink to create a new placeholder room, room number 150 for Microsoft Resources meeting area and room number 200 for the prep kitchen. Now notice that some of these items are gray, meaning that I can't change them like for instance area. So if I come over here and I say the catering kitchen, I would like the catering kitchen to be 5,000 square feet. 
well, you know what? Excel is going to allow me to do that, but I want you, I did that so that you can see that IDA BIM link's not going to allow that to happen because it that's a read-only property in Revit. We're we're just basically just saying, hey, we want to look at the, the square footage or maybe we want to do some manipulations or formulas to it, but I can't change it because if I were to say 5,000 square feet, how does Revit know like you know where the room would grow, like you know whether vertically or horizontally? But anyway, I've made a lot of changes in this spreadsheet. I've renumbered the rooms, I've added a couple rooms, I've changed the room types, I've changed departments, I've changed the case to lowercase. Now I'm going to save this information. And I'm going to come back over here to Revit and I'm going to import. All right, and I'm going to import that room schedule that I just changed. So it goes through its great calculations and it says, hey, there's some things here that just so you might want to be aware of. It's telling me all the things that got changed in the upper dialog area. And in the lower dialog, it's telling me some items that just, uh, you know, hey, you created two new unplaced rooms, but hey, you were unable to change this property. It was read only. So we are very, very careful. I can't stress that enough about the Revit database. Um, we make sure that the integrity of the Revit database is maintained um, so that you're not you know, switching, for instance, if the parameter was a type-based parameter and you're trying to put a number-based parameter in it, it's just not going to allow you to do that. So anyway, I'm happy with all these changes. I'm going to import and I'm going to close. And now if I come over here, uh, we have our multi-purpose space, right? And I'm going to say, you know what, That was. Uh, let's take that that room and let's tab on that that's like tab uh, and let's delete that room and so now what I'd really like to do is place a new room and instead of placing it from a new room now I've got a limp or a, a list of all of my rooms my multi-purpose space you know what I would like this to be the Microsoft resources meeting area and it's now room number 150 again remember it had it kept the the room number, and in fact, all of the information, like when I select on that room, right, and I go here, it's got, uh, for instance, here's the name, the Microsoft Resources Meeting Area, the department is set to occupancy. If I had other things that I wanted to, like, you know, like, again, the ceiling finish, floor finish, wall finish, I could easily have done those as well. So it's a great way for me to, again, update all that information. Now, I told you at the beginning of the presentation that I wanted to um, uh, make sure that I got my engineers. So I'm going to open up a new project here very quickly. And this project itself is a mechanical project. And again, I'm going to use IDA BIM Link very uh, quickly here. If I go over here to my uh, IDA software, here is BIM Link. And I'm going to export out um, and load a sample. That sample is going to come from my quality control and my device elevations. So now I'm going to look at all the device elevations very quickly in an Excel format. I'm going to say, you know what, let's uh, go ahead and export that to my device elevations. And I can open that file, scan all of the elevations, and you see that all of them are at 1200 except for this one. And maybe there was multiple ones, maybe it's okay, but now I'm going to say, you know what, I actually want to change that to 1200 as well. I'm going to save it. If I want to look at that, I can come over here and say to uh, back to Revit. Too many uh, windows open here. And we're going to come over to my manage. And we'll manage. I want to look and select by ID. That I want to grab that ID. So now when I show that ID, oops, yep. Uh, let's close that and say OK. Um, now you see that that device is uh, about you know three quarters of the way up that door. So if I go back to uh, IDA BIM Link, and now I'm going to make sure that I did save that file. There's my elevation, so I'm going to say Save and Import my device elevations. So in this case, it was only one, but can imagine if there were hundreds of these things that I wanted to change in one fell swoop, and you saw now that moved down. So now it's lower. If you don't believe me, I can say undo, and now it goes up, and again, now it goes down as far as, you know, this is a great way for me to quickly review the information, uh, like for all these device elevations. 
I'm going to close that and I'll switch back to my um, presentation here. So IDA BIM link, hopefully I gave you just a couple examples that you can certainly edit parameters that appear in schedules, but you can also rename things, families and types very easily. You can manage parameters that don't appear in schedules. I mean, we've all had that issue where, you know, your the parameter is available to you, you know you filled it out, but you just can't uh, seem to be able to schedule it correctly. I showed you that you can create new rooms, but you can also create new um, uh, areas, schedule keys, masses, generic models, uh, sheets, um, and spaces as well. And then I kind of touched upon the fact that we can have, you know, RVT linked data, but so uh, I can use that as reporting feature. I'm not able to change information in the link, just like you can't with Revit, um, but I can certainly report on that information. And then I've got information for design options and all the phase data as well. And again, I'm just touching the surface here because we're going to be presenting a further webinar on IDA BIM link in the future. And then hopefully I've shown you that um, editing with Excel allows you to quickly manipulate and uh, change these items with ease. And just like IDA Explorer, we have multiple versions of, of IDA BIM link that match the Revit version. So Revit 2015, 16, and 17 are probably our most uh, used uh, releases. So you notice that we just released a new version of in April of this year, but we also released an update to, to our 2016 and our 2015 uh, version as well. And again, we go back to 2014 and 13 with BIMLINK, but most of our users are on these last three releases. Mm -hmm.